Did you know that magnesium can be life-changing when supplemented with hypothyroidism, but that it can also cause a lot of health issues if you use the wrong form of magnesium? Hi, I'm Dr. Isabella Wentz, host of the Thyroid Pharmacist Healing Conversations podcast, also known as your thyroid pharmacist. I became a Hashimoto's expert slash thyroid expert as a result of my own journey with Hashimoto's. And I've been able to get myself into remission and now help others do the same. Let's talk about magnesium today. So magnesium is a very, very helpful nutrient. A few years ago, I started working with a new client. And as I typically do, I had her fill out an intake, which contained all of her health conditions, all of her medications, supplements, and a comprehensive health history. Part of it was that she was taking 12 different supplements from an alternative medicine doctor, and some of them were antimicrobial agents used for killing gut pathogens. Some of them were herbs and nutrients meant to support her liver adrenals, but she still had a lot of symptoms, and she wasn't sure if any of the supplements were helping her. So I looked at her symptoms, and she was actually dealing with migraines constipation, insomnia, sensitivity to loud noises, and anxiety. I went through a questionnaire with her that looks at some of those symptoms, and we came up with that she had a magnesium deficiency based on some of these symptoms. So she ended up being able to go off of all of these different supplements. We had her stop them because we weren't really sure if any of them were actually helping, right? And the only recommendation I made for her was magnesium at bedtime. So within a couple of weeks, she started sleeping better. Her anxiety got better. She was no longer sensitive to loud noises and her headaches virtually disappeared. I recommended the magnesium citrate version for her because it can relieve constipation as well. So she was relieved of that. Now, sometimes If you get the right nutrient for the right person with the right symptoms, you can eliminate half a dozen different symptoms, sometimes 10 different symptoms, versus trying to take 12 different supplements and having a ton of different symptoms. So this is what I want to teach you about. I want to teach you about really understanding your own body and the subtle messages that it's sending to you to help you determine if a supplement is right for you and perhaps what kind of a supplement you might want to take. We're all very different. We're all bio-individual. And sometimes you might see information on the internet that everybody should be taking this and nobody should be taking that. And of course, that's like never the truth, right? The truth is within your own body, within your own symptoms, within the messages that your body is trying to send you. So today we're going to be talking about common symptoms of magnesium deficiency, We're going to be talking about the magnesium and thyroid connection, as well as the best types of magnesium supplements and what to look out for. So let's start with magnesium deficiency. So you might be tested and your doctor might say all of your labs are normal and there can be really overt deficiencies of nutrients that are going to be found on lab tests. This is definitely something, you know, if somebody is in a life-threatening condition, This might come out on a lab test, but for most people, they're going to have a subclinical magnesium deficiency. So they might not be having heart arrhythmias or other types of serious reactions, seizures. They're not, they might not be hospitalized, but they might show depression or poor mood. They might show irritability or anxiety. They might have trouble with focusing. They might have frequent headaches or migraines. They might have acid reflux. Sensitivity to loud noises is going to be a red flag for me. Fatigue. Family history of asthma. Constipation, which would be fewer than two bowel movements a day. Excess stress. Trouble falling or staying asleep. Muscle twitching. Eye twitching. Premenstrual syndrome. They might have hand cramps. They might have menstrual cramps. They might have restless leg syndrome. They might have heart flutters, skip beats, or palpitations. History of kidney stones, heart disease, mitral valve prolapse. 
and so on and so forth. For me, if you have joint pain, leg cramps, menstrual cramps, or thyroid disorders, this would also be a red flag. So what's the connection between magnesium and thyroid health? Low magnesium levels are associated with thyroglobulin antibody positivity, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and hypothyroidism. And a magnesium deficiency can put those with Hashimoto's at a higher risk of developing some of these symptoms that we may attribute to hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. In my experience, people with Hashimoto's oftentimes have numerous nutrient deficiencies, and magnesium is one of the ones that keeps coming up and up again. Reasons could be poor nutritional intake. It's pretty challenging to get enough magnesium from our food. We'd have to be eating a lot of leafy greens. Sometimes stress can actually deplete our magnesium levels. Toxins, certain medications can deplete our magnesium levels. And so mostly I, I see this very, very common. And it can really have an impact on our thyroid function, on our mood, on our digestive function. And as you saw, it can produce a lot of different symptoms. I generally love using food as medicine for supplements. I will say that magnesium you can find in green leafy veggies like spinach or kale, whole grains, nuts, beans, legumes. But it is a little bit tricky to get enough magnesium from our diet and the types of deficiencies that people with Hashimoto's and autoimmunity have, they generally respond best to supplementation. I do like to utilize a few different magnesium supplements, and I will actually talk about something that's happened to a lot of my clients and a lot of my readers and people within my community when they have an adverse reaction to a specific type of magnesium. So we'll go through all of that. Now, one of my favorite ways to supplement with magnesium if you have joint pains and if you're anxious is by doing an Epsom salt bath. So this is going to be about one cup of Epsom salts in your bath water and you just soak for 30. It sounds very, very luxurious. It's very relaxing. I can almost guarantee that you're going to sleep better that night and you're going to have immediate relief of any kind of joint pains. Sometimes if you have headaches, this is a great way to get them to go away. Now, if you can do this as part of your daily routine, that would be wonderful. I know these type of routines are not possible to everybody. Some people don't have a bathtub. Some people don't like baths. Some people cannot soak in baths. Some people have children that prevent them from taking baths or spouses or whatnot. There's also supplements that I like to utilize. Typically, when a person with Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism is requiring a magnesium supplement, I generally recommend the magnesium citrate version. It does tend to promote bowel movements, which is a win-win because a lot of times people with hypothyroidism have constipation. And this is kind of a beneficial side effect of it. The other things that magnesium citrate helps with is anxiety and sleep and those cramps. Generally speaking, when I see people with menstrual cramps, I'm like very, very happy because we start them on a daily magnesium supplement. And by the first month of utilizing this supplement, their menstrual cramps are like 80% better by the second month that they're taking their magnesium supplements, their menstrual cramps are virtually completely gone. And then we find, you know, insomnia, anxiety, pain, sleep issues, a lot of these things really, really improve. Now, I will say if you find that magnesium citrate tends to give you some diarrhea, right, as a side effect, or if you already have diarrhea, then you may want to consider a different version. I you might want to go to the Epsom salts. This is going to be one option for you. Or you also may want to try the magnesium glycinate version. The only caveat I have is with magnesium glycinate, I know a lot of times people will say this is like the best and most bioavailable version of magnesium. I've actually interestingly seen people have very adverse reactions to, to it. At first, I thought they were like paradoxical reactions, which, which basically means they're unpredictable and the opposite of what you would expect. But now I understand the mechanism of action behind those reactions, and I'll, I'll go through and explain that a little bit. But essentially what I saw with people taking magnesium glycinate is they would get more anxious, they'd have insomnia, they'd have panic attacks, and they'd have more joint pain. 
And this was very puzzling to me at first. So of course, being a root cause detective, I went down the rabbit hole. And what I came to realize is that in some people, um, the glycinate version can overconvert into something known as glutamate, which is an activating neurotransmitter, and that can make us feel very, very anxious, and that can give us insomnia. The other thing that can happen in people with um, deficiency in B6 or in people with oxalate issues, that the glycinate can go down this metabolic pathway known as the glycoxalate pathway, and then it converts to oxalates in the body. So if you're somebody that is sensitive to oxalates, you might find that you have joint pain or bladder issues, even some insomnia issues, and that magnesium glycinate can make those issues worse because it causes your body to produce more of those oxalates. This is why, you know, I'm a bit cautious with re recommending magnesium glycinate. I will say it does work for some people, but anywhere from 30 to 50% of people with Hashimoto's might have adverse reactions to it. And then they're like, okay, I must not be magnesium deficient or magnesium didn't work for me where they just don't realize it's the form of magnesium. And again, I go back to magnesium citrate. This is the one that's been studied most in hypothyroidism, utilized over many, many years. It's shown to start to normalize the appearance of the thyroid gland on an ultrasound. And it does help with those bowel movements and a lot of these symptoms People are far less likely to have those adverse reactions to it, although anything is possible because we are all unique bio-individual humans, right? And my other favorite option for people with Hashimoto's is going to be just Epsom salt baths because you absorb that magnesium through your skin topically, and that's a great thing to add into your daily routine. Now, I don't recommend drinking your Epsom salt bath water unless you want to have diarrhea. Um, we just want to absorb that through the body. Can you do an Epsom salt bath and a magnesium supplement? In some cases, people can. Generally speaking, if you're finding that you are having excess bowel movements and diarrhea, you would want to cut back on the magnesium citrate and the Epsom salt baths. I hope that this little podcast has been helpful for you to figure out if you might have magnesium deficiency, what you can do about it, and the different types of magnesium that are most helpful for people with thyroid issues. This has been Isabella Wentz, your thyroid pharmacist. I do have a link to magnesium in the show notes. You can uh, get a link to my article on magnesium. And if you go to rootcology.com and wanted to try the magnesium citrate there, you can uh, use the code podcast to get 10% off of that. It's also currently on a 10% special right now. So hopefully you'll take advantage of that. I hope that you find it helpful. And I hope that some of these symptoms can be a thing in the past for you. Thank you so much for joining. Until next time, this has been Thyroid Pharmacist Healing Conversations Podcast.